I need help working with what I think is a tightly wrapped shame response in a male client. When I try to tangle with him, he will touch a pain point briefly, then launch into his view of his wife, and then want to launch into all his theories about how she's the problem. I am wondering how I might help him slow down when he desperately wants to finish his damaging thought. Do I just let him yeah. shoot himself in the foot a few times and make explicit what's happening? Yeah. Looks like you just shot yourself with the foot again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that must hurt. Please don't treat his bullets as an enactment because that's going to erode all the safety you're working so hard to help them feel. Catch the bullets. He sends big statements, whether to his wife, about his wife, or to you, the clinician. He's making demands, emotionally loaded demands. We want to make sure the clinician doesn't get stuck in a negative interactional pattern with this client. He will touch a point of pain briefly, and then he gets reactive. And a beautiful process comment would be, I've stopped counting. There have been countless examples in previous sessions where you let me walk you closer to your pain, which takes all kinds of strength and courage. But then without knowledge, without any signal, you say, no more, no more lingering. Don't let me touch this point of pain. And here's how I'm going to get out of it. I'm going to blame. I'm going to demand. I'm going to, I got to do something big to get me away from this pain. And that moment is where I need to work with you because what's happening after that kind of moment is undermining our progress. Could you let me work with you right there? That mechanism, that intrapsychic mechanism that's ensured your survival, that mechanism ensured your survival, but now it's working against you. Mm -hmm. And I want to be a better helper for you in that exact moment. And so let me catch it. Let me work with you. It doesn't work. That's how we know the coping strategy is obsolete. It doesn't work. You're pushing her away. And frankly, you push me away and then I've got to work to come back so I can work on your behalf. Oh, so lovely. What does it feel like? What's a good image for when I've brought you too close to your pain and you say, Mm -hmm. danger zone, danger zone. You get on your horse and you gallop away. You push the eject button and you get yourself out of here. And the way you do that is to make a big demanding statement to her, to me. Mm -hmm. What is a good image for what happens? What are you aware of on the inside? What sensations do you have? Too close to the edge, danger zone, dynamite's going to blow. No one's ever helped him probably unwrap his shame response. And this is part of it. And I bet you he feels ashamed by his demands. Let's build another route to a different place that actually is effective. And it's all about effective dependence. You're reflecting to him. When we get aware of it, we put it out there. It's a collaborative experience on what we yes. do about it. Yes. There's no working anything behind a curtain, whether it ends up being magical or not. Even if it ends up being magical, the fact that it's behind a curtain mm -hmm. will not be transferable, will not be generalizable for the client. Yeah. We're just people talking to people. Well, and I think it's talking, easy. Not that it's easy. So true. Right. But I just want to point out two other things you did in that sort of short role play. You said about his coping strategy, this ensured your survival. He earned it. He's entitled he to it. it. And you've got to reflect how limited it is, how it's now obsolete, and it's not working for him. What he longs for, the very thing he wants with the one who matters most is going to be blocked. It's not going to be likely or even possible to have it. But the other thing that you said that hit my heart that I love as a reflection to our clients in this position is no one has helped you with this place. Yeah. Shame. yeah no yeah. one has helped you here. Yeah. And there's something so true and deep and touching about that, right? No yeah. one has helped this man there. He That's didn't right. come to this because he had you know, an army of caring others to help him with pain points. Some people might say that's a huge presumption, Catherine, and it is a huge presumption. No one has helped you here, but I'm happy to be wrong. This question tells me he's rigid in this way, and the strength of the rigidity tells me how little help he had. Yeah. He is not well-resourced in this place. It's a solid yeah. hypothesis. Seriously, and I'm happy to test it. <laughs> right, right, right. For more hot tips on emotionally focused therapy, go to theeftcafe.com and sign up for our newsletter where you will receive short little clips like the one you just watched.